Everybody should do in their lifetime sometime two things. One is to consider death, to observe skulls and skeletons, and to wonder what it will be like to go to sleep and never wake up. Never. That uh, is the most, is a very gloomy uh, thing for contemplation, but it's like manure. Just as manure fertilizes the plants and so on, so the contemplation of death and the acceptance of death is very highly generative of creative life. You get wonderful things out of that. And the other thing to contemplate is to follow the possibility of the idea that you are totally selfish. That you don't have a good thing to be said for you at all. You are a complete, utter rascal. <laughs> Now, when you go deeply into the nature of selfishness, what do you discover? You say, I love myself, I seek my own advantage. Now, what is the self that I love? What do I want? And that becomes an increasingly ever deepening puzzle. Now, I've often referred to this when you say to somebody else, I love you. It's always rather disconcerting to the person to whom you say that. If you imply that you love them with a pure, disinterested and holy love, they automatically suspect it as being a little bit phony. But if you say, I love you so much I could eat you, that's an expression, it's a way of saying to a person, you attract me so much that I can't help it. I'm absolutely bowled over by you, I'm gone. And people like that. Then they feel they're really being loved, that it's absolutely genuine. But now, I love you so much I could eat you. Now what the devil do I want? I certainly don't want to eat the girl in the sense of literally devouring her, because then she'd disappear. <laughs> <sighs> ah. But I love myself. And what is me? How do, in what way do I know me? When it suddenly occurs to me that I know me only in terms of you. And that the main task of the psychotherapist is to do what he called to integrate the evil. To, as it were, put the devil in us in its proper function. Because you see, it's always the devil, the unacknowledged one, the outcast, the scapegoat, the bastard, the bad guy, you see, the black sheep of the family. It's always from that point that generation comes. In other words, uh, in the same way as in the drama, Uh, to have the play, it's necessary to introduce a villain. It's necessary to introduce a certain element of trouble. So, in the whole scheme of life, there has to be the shadow. Because without the shadow, there can't be the substance. So, this is why there is a very strange association between crime and all naughty things, and holiness. You see, holiness is way beyond being good. Good people aren't necessarily holy people. A holy person is one who is whole, who has, as it were, reconciled his opposites. And so there's always something slightly scary about holy people. And other people react to them in very strange ways. They can't make up their minds whether they're saints or devils. And so holy people have throughout history always created a great deal of trouble along with their creative results. Let's take Jesus, for example. Trouble that Jesus created is absolutely incalculable. <laughs> Think of the Crusades, the Inquisition, the heaven only knows what's gone on in the name of Jesus. Very remarkable. Freud's a big troublemaker.
Jung had a tremendous humor. And he knew that nobody can be completely honest. That you will try and you will have a great deal of success in uh, exploring your motivations and your dark unconscious depths. But there will be a certain point at which you will say, well, I have had enough of that. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and do you see how in a strange way there's a certain sanity in that? When a person indulges in a certain kind of duplicity, of deception, there is something, you all laughed when I said that, there was something humorous about it. And this humor is a very funny thing. Basically humor is an attitude of laughter about oneself. There is malicious humor, or which is laughing at other people. But real deep humor is laughter at oneself. Now why fundamentally do you laugh about yourself? What makes you laugh about yourself? Isn't it because you know that there is a big difference between what goes on the outside and what goes on the inside? <laughs> now I passed you around a lot of embroidery to look at before we started. And I'm perfectly sure that you got the point that there's a big difference between the front and the back. <coughs> In some forms of embroidery, the back is very different from the front because people take shortcuts. In the front, everything is orderly and it is supposed to be kind of messy on the back side. See, which side will you wear? You've got to be sure you get the front in the front, have the back in the back. The back has all the little tricks in it, all the shortcuts, all the low down that people don't acknowledge, see? And it's exactly the same with the way we live. You know, like sweeping the dust under the carpet in a hurry just before the guests come. I mean, we do ever so many things like that. And if you don't do it, if you don't think you do it, and you think, well, really, I, my embroidery is the same on both sides, see? Well, you're deceiving yourself. Because what you're doing is you're taking the shortcuts in another dimension, which you're keeping out of consciousness. Everybody takes the shortcuts. Everybody plays tricks. Everybody has in himself an element of duplicity, of deception. Because you see, from this point of view that I'm discussing, where the web is the trap, to be is to deceive. Think of camouflage, the chameleon who changes its color. Think of the butterfly pretending it has eyes, Think of the flower saying to the bee, like my honey. <laughs> the bee says, wow. <laughs> but then that means that the bee has to be, and it has to go on living, and all the trouble it takes to go around collecting honey and raising other bees and organizing itself and doing that dance which tells the other bees where there's more honey. There's all that stuff to do. But the flower was deceptive. Now, in the same way, I've often said, life is, is a drama, and a drama is a deception. It's a big act. 